Good morning, students. This is uh, Purna Chandra Higher Secondary School. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about a very, two very important topics. The first one is the combination of capacitors, and the second one is the energy stored in the capacitor. These are the two important topics on which we will have to going to discuss in the throughout the session. Okay. So, first of all. We are, there, uh, we are going to discuss about the combination of the capacitors. In my previous video, dear students, we have discussed about what? Now we have discussed about what is a, what is a capacitor, types of capacitors, what is capacitance, okay? And uh, what is the uh, your capacitance value of a parallel plate capacitors? What is the dielectric medium? What is polarization? These things we have discussed in the previous classes. Okay. So now, let us discuss about the combination of capacitors. So as we know that, capacitor is an electronic device and it should be connected in the electronic circuit. Okay. So now the question arises: how the components or the capacitors can be connected in an electric circuit or electronic circuit. Okay. So there are two types of connections hmm, available in the capacitor connections. One is, look at the figure, one is your series combination, another one is your parallel combinations. These are the two combinations we have hmm, by which we can connect the capacitors in the electric circuit. Okay. So let us discuss about the series combinations. Okay. So as you have seen in the figure, look at the figure very carefully, as you have seen in the figure, hmm, we are taking three capacitors. C1, C2 and C3. Okay. We are taking three capacitors C1, C2, C3. What we are assuming? Now we are assuming that let V1 is the potential electron C1, V2 is the potential electron C2, V3 is the potential electron C3. Right? Because as, they are, as these capacitors are connected in series, look at very carefully. How these are connected? They are con these are connected one terminal the negative to positive, again negative to positive, okay, in this way. So that's why this is series combination. That means the negative terminal of one is connected to the positive terminal, then the negative terminal of one is connected to the positive terminal in this way. This is very important. That's why we can verify it, or in this way we can verify whether it is a series connection or not. Okay, so that is a very important point. Then in case of series connection, the one terminal that is either it is positive, if it is positive, then the next terminal or the next connected terminal becomes negative. If the first terminal becomes negative, then the next terminal becomes positive. Okay, that should not be the positive terminal cannot be connected to a positive terminal. It is not possible. In which combination? Series combination. Okay. So now we'll, uh, another one thing we assume that led to these three capacitors. The voltage supplied to it, let me assume the voltage supplied to whole circuit, how? The V. Okay, so the total voltage supplied to V and the V is divided hmm. in the C1 capacitor, the amount of voltage V, V1, at C2 capacitor, the amount of voltage V, V2, and the C3 capacitor, the amount of voltage is V3. Okay, and as we know that the capacitors are the components which store the electric charge. Okay. It is a component which store the charge. So now in this type of connection, these are the assumptions we have taken in series combinations. Okay. So what our aim? Now our aim to find out the effective capacitance. Remember, what your aim? Now our aim to find out the effective capacitance or the net capacitance of the series combination of the circuit. Okay, so first of all, to find out the net or effective capacitance of the whole circuit, so one by one we are going to find out, first we have to find out what is the value of V1, next we are going to find out what is the value of V2, and next we are going to find out what is the value of V3. Okay, so first the V1 from the previous formula of your capacitance, what is the formula? Now V is equal to Q by C, this is the normal formula in the previous classes or in the previous videos we have discussed. So that's why yeah, this is V1, remember, so this is V1. So V1 and one very important term in this, in this, uh, your capacity, in this series combination of this capacitance, okay, 
the charge of this in this uh, your uh, each capacitor remains same is a very important one okay so that's why v1 is equal to q by c1 v2 is equal to q by c2 v3 is equal to q by c3 remember okay so that's why uh, in this first in the series come again i will repeat in the series combination in the capacitors c1 c2 c3 the charge remains same but the voltage becomes different okay so that's why v1 is equal to q by c1 v2 is equal to q by c2 v3 is equal to q by c3 okay so next what are going to find out the total voltage so total voltage is what total voltage of this series combination of the of this whole circuit so v is equal to v1 plus v2 plus v3 okay so that that implies so what is v what is v so v is the total capacitance sorry v is the total voltage supplied to it or total potential supplied to the circuit okay so if we will assume that here cs is the effective capacitance again i will repeat if cs is the effective capacitance of the series combination that is very important now which combination in a series combination then i can write here so v is equal to q divided by effective capacitance cs okay then v1 value i have to put here that is q by c1 plus v2 value i have to put that is q by c2 v3 value i have to put that is q by c3 okay so that implies q divided by cs is equal to, i have to take the q come so what i can write here na c1 by c1 divided by 1 by c2 divided by 1 by c3 okay so that implies in the both side that is in the lhs and then in the rhs in the both side the q will be cancel out so what is left there so 1 by cs 1 by effective capacitance value is equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 so this is let me give it equation number a and name it equation number a okay so <clears throat> the equation number a defines the effective again i will repeat the effective or net capacitance value in which combination in series combination of the capacitor 1 by cs is equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 okay so now this we have taken here three capacitors but you can take also number of capacitors so in general if there are if there are n number of capacitors n number of capacitors okay then what i have to write here now 1 by cs is equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 dot 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 up to 1 by cm so this is my formula of the net or effective capacitance value in which combination like series combination of the capacitors okay so a very important conclusion from here we can derive okay what is the conclusion now look at the expression very carefully okay so if the capacitors are connected in series remember if the capacitors are connected in series in a circuit then the net or effective capacitance becomes decreases not increases okay so remember that one if it is in series combination then the effective or net capacitance becomes decreases okay so this is all about your series combination is a very important long question from the exam point of view okay so this is all we discuss about the series combination next let us discuss about the parallel combination okay okay so now move into this part this is over this is over because in this part what is our result i will get the result i will get this is 1 by cs is equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 plus 1 by c3 that means the net effective capacitance becomes decreases okay now we will do the this second type that is your 
parallel combination. Okay, okay, pass it. Parallel combination. Now, as all of you seen here in the parallel combinations, hmm, what actually or how this figure is different from this? Look at very carefully. Here also we are giving the V amount of potential. Here also we are giving V amount of potential, but in this case, the V is divided into three capacitors. First capacitor being V1, second capacitor being V2, third capacitor having V3, but which remain constant? The charge remains constant. Remember, in case of series, the charge remains constant. Here also you will get charge Q, here also you will get charge Q, and here also you will get charge Q. Okay? But in case of parallel combination, when you are giving a potential V, look at this combination. All the positives, all these terminals, suppose, suppose these are the positive terminals, suppose these are the positive terminals and these are the negative terminals. Look at this. All the positive terminals connected to one point or one node and all the negative terminals connected to another node okay so that's why the node a is connected to all the positive terminals of this capacitor c1 c2 and c3 and all the negative terminals of this capacitor c1 c2 c3 connected to another node that is b okay this is the main structural difference between these and these here the negative is connected to positive the negative is connected to positive okay but here all the positive connected to one terminal all the negative connected to another terminal so that conclude that here the potential different at different capacitance but here the capacitance remains same in all the capacitors remember that point that is in capacitor c1 there is also a potential b in capacitor C2, there is also a potential V. In capacitor C3, there is also a potential V. But the charge cannot be same. Here the charge is Q1 at C1. Here the charge is Q2 at C2. And here the charge is Q3 at C3. That is the main. That means in case of parallel combination, the charge is different. Okay. But the potential becomes same. Okay, so now let us now derive this one. So as we know that the charge is different here. Okay, so what you will get now, or what you will take, we will take that let at C1 the charge is Q1, at C2 the charge is Q2, at C3 the charge is Q3. We are assuming these two. Okay, so at C1 the charge is Q1. So at, uh, we are going to find out what is the value of Q1. We are going to find out what is the value of Q2 and we are going to find out what is the value of Q3. Okay. So now from the, again from the capacitance formula. So Q is equal to Cv. Okay. C means capacitance value is C1. But potential remains same. So Q1 is equal to C1B. So what is Q2? Now C2B. What is Q3? Now C3B. Look at that the potential becomes same. But the charges are different. Okay. So now take. What is my net charge in case of parallel combination? I have to find out the total charge. Here we are going to find out total voltage because voltage is different. Okay. But here voltage is same but charges are different. That's why we are going to find out the net or total charge. Very simple. So now the total charge Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Okay. So that implies. Okay. So here we are taking in case of series combination we are taking CS as the effective one but here let us take uh, CP is the effective capacitance okay so now so Q Q is the total one so let us put so that is CP V very simple okay is equal to in place of Q1 I have to put C1V in place of Q2 I have to put C2B in place of Q3, I have to put C3B. Okay. So that implies H. Hmm. That implies H. Now the V, I can take it common. Hmm. So V I can take it. So this is C1 plus C2 plus C3. Very simple. So that implies H. 
बी बी कैंसिल आउट ऑन बोथ साइड सो व्हाट इज माय इफेक्टिव कैपेसिटीज सो सी पी इज इक्वल टू सी वन प्लस सी टू प्लस सी थ्री आई थिंक इन दिस केस ऑल ऑफ यू रिमेंबर दैट वन बाय सी एस लुक एट दैट वन बाय सी एस इज इक्वल टू वन बाय सी वन प्लस वन बाय सी टू प्लस वन बाय सी दिस इज द रेसी प्रोकल इन दिस इज बट in the parallel combination this is not a reciprocal one it is the direct addition okay that is the net or effective capacitance value cp is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 okay so now remember now i have to give my final conclusion that in case of your parallel combination the effective or net capacitance of the circuit becomes increases okay but in case of series combination it becomes decrease so that is a very important conclusion so you have to to your students you have to remember that in case of series combination or when the capacitors i will make it in a series combination in a circuit then the net or effective capacitance becomes decreases and we are connecting uh, when we are connecting in, in a parallel combination the net or effective capacitance becomes what net or effective capacitance becomes increases because these are the reciprocal one but these are not reciprocal these are the direct addition okay so p is equal to c1 plus c2 plus c3 okay and this is the first part the combination of capacitors is a very important question or long question from the exam point of view okay so now so this is all about your first session or first part the digital combination of your capacitors i think you are clear about them hmm. so now we move into the second part okay okay so now we are moving into the second part that is your energy stored in the capacitor which is a very important three marks question from the cchc board from the example of you energy what is the energy stored in a capacitor okay so because we know that capacitor is an electronic device or electronics component which store the charge okay so as the capacitor will store the charge then due to the storage of the charge work must be done there is no due to the storage of the charge work must be done okay so first of all before finding out the energy storage in a capacitor what what we are going to find out now we must have to find out what is my net work done okay due to the store of the charge in a capacitor this is the first aim hmm so uh, we are first going to find out the what is the work done due to the storage of the, the charge in a capacitor let us find out the total so for this let i will assume one thing that let q okay so let q be the charge stored in a capacitor let us take it must any capacitor but let us take uh, a parallel capacitor hmm, which is having a charge q okay and it is having a potential how much nothing it is by giving the charge q to this capacitor the potential of the capacitor become how much nothing let us assume okay so let us what even assume again i have told now by giving a charge q to the capacitor let the potential of the capacitor become v okay so now what is the amount of work done very simple so amount of work done dw is equal to how much the v dq this is the amount of work done due to the storage of the charge inside the capacitor this is the formula remember this is that is the, the dw is the amount of work done dw is equal to v dq okay so this is the work done or this is the expression of work done by storing the charge in a capacitor dw is equal to v dq very simple okay now what is the expression of v or what is the value of v from this capacitance we know that what is the value of v now v is equal to how much now v is equal to q by c from the capacitance formula we know that v is equal to q by c very simple okay so that implies dw is equal to let us put the value here so q by c dq q by c dq so now in the next part we are going to find out the total work done so total work done or net work done becomes integration of this one very simple so integration of dw hmm so integration of dw means 
put the dw value here so dw value we will get q by c dq okay so that implies 1 by c i will take it out because the variable is q dq so this is integration q dq okay so what is the value of q dq so let us write it here hmm. so that that is equal to so 1 by c hmm. so integration of x dx what is the value integration value of x dx the same formula is applied here okay so integration of q dq the formula is q square divided by 2 very simple okay so that means that implies the total work done w is equal to how much now 1 by 2 q square divided by c okay okay very simple so now this is my total work done by storing the charge inside the capacitor okay so w is equal to 1 by 2 q square by c either this formula you can use or in place of q look at that in place of q q is equal to bc so here also you can put half bc square divided by c so that implies that is b square c okay once you cancel out so that means either this formula you can use or this formula you can use okay so now this amount of work whatever work done by storing the charge inside the capacitor we will get the expression this work done is nothing but the energy stored in this capacitor okay so these two formulas these are the two ticks i have given here remember these two formulas one formula is 1 by 2 q square by c another formula is just simplified formula 1 by 2 d square c okay so this work done Finally, I will write this work done is stored in the form of energy. So let us name it as U. Okay. So U is equal to the finally I will get half Q square by C or half B square C. Okay. So this is the formula or this is the derivation, whatever I have derived here. This is the derivation of the energy stored in the capacitor so the concept is that due to the storage of the charge inside the capacitor whatever work is done that work done is nothing but your potential energy or that work done is nothing but your energy stored in this capacitor okay so first of all this is my work done formula then from this work done by integration we will get the w or work done then this work done is stored in the Okay, so these things we have already discussed. Uh, your do, these two things we have already discussed. The first one is the combination of capacitor, and the second one is the energy stored in the capacitor. The first one is important from the long question, and the second part is important from the three marks question and from some of the problems. Okay, so let us solve one problem, only one problem from the capacitors. Look at very carefully, students, how the problems can be solved. Okay. So look at one problem just I will discuss. Look at this problem very carefully. Just one problem I have to discuss. Look at that. To find out the effective one, only one problem I have to discuss. figure all of you this is a question this is a given your 10 microfarad this is given your 5 microfarad and this one given your 4 microfarad okay this is the capacitor c1 this is the capacitor c2 and this is the capacitor c3 okay so what is our aim what is our aim not to, not to find out the effective capacitors that is our aim the effective capacitance value of the given circuit this one okay so this is my question 
this is a problem and this is my question where there is three capacitors can will be arranged in this fashion hmm. and you are able to find out the effective capacitance value of this given circuit so look at it and uh, how i will solve it look at it here hmm. so this is look at it this is the terminal a this is the terminal b you cannot go in the both the terminals or you cannot start from both the terminals only one terminal i will take first okay so let us i will move from terminal number a hmm. so when i will move from terminal number a in this session okay look at very carefully remember one thing when i told you in case of series combination the potential become different but the charge remains same very simple and how we will know that the uh, capacitors are in series combination because one terminal is connected to the opposite terminal not the same terminal so look at it this is c1 and c2 when we are moving to this side when we are moving to this side then we are facing this capacitor okay so this capacitor look at it is c1 and c2 so if i will assume that if i will connect a any imaginary voltage remember imaginary voltage to it then suppose this is your positive one suppose this is your negative one then this terminal become positive this terminal become negative very soon and this terminal become positive this terminal become negative that means the negative is connected to positive that means these two c1 and c2 cannot be connected in parallel it must be connected in series combination okay as we have discussed it so so that means simply first of all you have to solve these two that is c1 and c2 very simple okay so that means e your uh, suppose from c1 and c2 write down from c1 and c2 hmm the effective capacitance suppose i am name it as c dash okay so c dash is equal to these two are connected in series because the negative is connected to positive opposite terminal so these are connected in series very simple that means your the uh, effective capacitance c dash one i have to apply the formula so 1 by c dash is equal to 1 by c1 plus 1 by c2 because these are in series combination so that implies 1 by 10 plus 1 by 5 clear so that implies just solve it so this is your how much na 10 very simple so this is your how much na 10 so 10 so this is your 1 plus 2 so this is your 3 by 10 okay so now that implies c dash is equal to just the reciprocal one that is 10 divided by 3 okay so micro for so now from this c1 and c2 i will get the effective capacitance okay so now next figure becomes look at the next figure very carefully so the next figure figure become is very important the next figure so the from these two i will get 10 by 3 remember this one from these two i will get 10 by 3 okay so now this is my terminal a now from these two i will get this and the next capacitance next capacitance becomes okay so this is next capacitance remember this is next capacitance okay so in the from the next capacitance now from these two i'll get this okay so now these two the effective one c dash suppose this is your c dash and this <coughs> let us verify whether this c dash and this c3 is connected in series or in parallel okay because these two are connected in between a and b remember this is these connected in between a and b so that's why let us mention in this way better okay so this is a now this is a effective one so this is b this is your c dash hmm. and finally this is your figure this is your c3 now look at this one hmm. so again you will move you are going from this side i have to find this these two are in series combination i'll get see this but look at it these two suppose this is this is the potential b 
this is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is positive, this is negative, this is positive, this is negative. Negative. That means the two positive terminals are connected to one terminal and these two negative terminals are connected to another terminal. That's why C dash and C3 are not in series combination. Because the both the positive terminals become connected to A, both the negative terminals become connected to B. That's why in the C1 and C3, remember in the C1 and C3, the potential remains same. Here also potential B, here also potential B, but the charge is different. That's why it is not a series combination, it is a parallel combination. Okay, so now find out the finally, the final effective capacitance, the final effective capacitance. Suppose I will name it as C double dash. Okay, so C double dash is equal to C dash as it is a parallel combination and we know that in case of parallel combination we are going to add it up. Okay, so directly, not reciprocal, we are adding up directly. So C dash plus C3, so that's why this is 10 by 3 plus C3 is given here 4. Okay, so just add up these ones, what I will get? Now this is a 10, this is 12 divided by 3, so this is 22 divided by 3 microfarad. Okay, so the effective capacitance of this whole circuit given in this figure is your how much? Now 22 divided by 3 microfarad and this is your answer. So in this way, you are going to solve the effective capacitance value this type of combined capacitors. Okay.